<clears throat> well, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this meeting of the uh, planning committee. My name is uh, John Walsh and I'm chairman of the committee for this uh, municipal year. I will introduce one or two others uh, in a few moments, but if I could begin by wishing everyone, officers, members and uh, viewers, a uh, happy new year and uh, we hope that uh, it is a successful and peaceful year for uh, everyone. Having said that, we have a sad uh, point to start with and that of course as uh, colleagues and uh, officers will know we lost uh, a colleague and friend, uh, Councillor Paul Wilde, uh, over the Christmas uh, holiday. Uh, Paul had been an occasional uh, member of planning committee, often as a deputy, but as such uh, he did uh, attend meetings and therefore I would ask if members would uh, respect uh, Paul's memory by observing uh, a minute's silence please. Thank you very much indeed. Can I now uh, affect some introductions please for visitors to this uh, meeting? As I said earlier, I'm Councillor John Walsh, I'm Chairman of the Planning Committee. I'm supported this afternoon by uh, Councillor uh, Ayub, the Vice Chairman and members. And we have to advise us uh, various planning officers and highway officers who will uh, speak at various points during the course uh, of the meeting. Uh, for those who are awaiting applications, can I advise you that there are two applications that are on the agenda that are deferred this afternoon and they are applications uh, 9179 stroke 20 land at Moses Gate Triangle and application 6464 land adjacent substation Doris Avenue. Those two for technical reasons stand deferred until the next uh, meeting. And then we're coming back to uh, that further meeting on the 4th of February, I think, is the day. I apologise to anyone who is attending this afternoon uh, for the, either of those applications for any convenience calls, but it is only at uh, late notice those have had to stand deferred uh, today. <coughs> we will go through the agenda as set out, and then when we come to planning applications, I will uh, refer to the process that we will uh, take point at that uh, stage. Can I also remind members that when we come to the planning applications, if members wish to speak, if you could use the uh, chat facility, it helps in ensuring that everyone who indicates a wish to uh, speak, uh, that uh, they, they do so. Thank you. If we come, first of all, item one on the agenda, is declarations of interest. Uh, Councillor Howarth. Oh yeah, thank you Chair. Um, item 09252 stroke 20. So I inadvertently uh, really made comment on that application and um, so again I'm going to recuse myself from hearing that application today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any further declarations? If so, if you Report them in the chat box, please, and then they're recorded to uh, the record. Item two, urgent business. Uh, there is nothing which has been brought to my uh, attention. Item three, apologies for absence. I've had yes. notification of only Councillor Wilkinson and Councillor Newall is here as deputy. Yes, that's correct, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. 
Item four, minutes from the previous meeting. These have been circulated. Meeting on the 10th of Moved December. Chair. Moved. Thank you, Councillor Hornby. Second. Thank you. Anyone demur from those minutes? Thank you very much indeed. I'm just advised um, by officers that uh, it is like the two applications deferred this afternoon are unlikely to come to the February meeting, but uh, more likely March meeting at the earliest. Thank you for that, uh, Alex. We come then to um, item uh, five on the uh, agenda, and they are planning applications, the report of the director of place. The benefit of those who are attending uh, the meeting for those applications. Uh, can I uh, I'll remind uh, or, or advise you that the process will be that officers will present the report uh, in summary. Members have had circulated a full report. Officers will refer to that. I will then invite a ward councillor, if one has registered, who is not on the planning committee, to address the meeting for up to five minutes. Uh, following that, we will take uh, representations from uh, an objector, if one has registered, uh, who can speak for up to three minutes uh, and then be asked to take any questions from members of the planning committee. Uh, following that, there will be uh, any supporter speaking who is registered and they can again speak for up to three minutes with questions from members. Uh, following that, members will have the opportunity to ask any technical questions of officers uh, before the matter is open for debate. As is uh, customary with these uh, meetings, we take applications in the order in which speakers have registered. And therefore, the first uh, application to be considered is application 7518 on page 28 of the bundle, Land Off Darwin Road, Bromley Cross. Um, we have, members will have noted, there is uh, a reference uh, in the uh, papers to um, a late uh, submission from the uh, Cooperative Wholesale Society um, and members I think received that copy of that yesterday uh, but uh, I think uh, Ms Williams you're going to deal with that uh, in your presentation please. Can I just say before you do that can I just check that we have in attendance the speakers who've registered uh, Liz Spencer Are you with us? Liz Spencer? I'd like two Apologies people in from the line. Oh, yes, this is Liz Spencer. Thank you. And Jonathan Harper. Yes, I'm on the line. Fine, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, uh, Ms. Williams. Thank you, Chair. As the Chair mentioned, um, we received a late subjection on behalf of the co-op, and this was also sent to members by email last night. Um, regarding the contents of that um, objection, officers would advise that the harm to the purposes and openness of the green belt has already been given substantial harm within the analysis of the report, and this is the most weight that can be given to a harm, and that it is for the decision taker and in this case, it's the committee members to decide how much weight they should give to the very special circumstances put forward by the applicants. This green belt site is, a, is the site of the former Holland's Nurseries Garden Centre, and it's been derelict for about five years. The proposed mixed use development comprises a little food store with an associated 125 space car park, a 91 space commuter car park for Bromley Cross Railway Station, a three-storey apartment building comprising 43 retirement living apartments, the creation of football pitches for Bromley Cross Football Club, a new access into the site and highway improvements on Darwin Road, which includes a new roundabout, a right turn lane and an uncontrolled pedestrian crossing, and also associated works to accommodate the development as listed within the officer's report. The southern half of the site has extant permission for pitches albeit unauthorised material was imported on these fields back in 2014. It's now proposed to remodel this inert material into a pitch plateau 
and to finish it with topsoil and grass. The proposed food store will be located in an out of centre location. However, the applicant has demonstrated that there are no sequentially preferable sites for the store in the local area and that it would not have a harmful impact on the vitality and viability of any allocated centres. The submitted transport assessment has confirmed that the proposed development would add to existing traffic on Darwin Road during the morning and, week and afternoon weekday peaks, but that only 50% of the trips associated with the food store would be entirely new on the highway network, as 50% would be classed as secondary trips as part of existing journeys. The trips associated with the commuter car park are already on the local highway and would instead be diverted from local residential roads to the proposed car park. Highways engineers consider, along with the proposed highways improvements on Darwin Road, that the level of additional trips created by the developments could be accommodated with minimal additional detriment to the current operational capacity of the surrounding highway network. The development as a whole, however, con constitutes inappropriate developments in the Greenbelt, as the commuter car park and the apartment building do not meet any of the exception criteria for developments within Greenbelt policy. Officers therefore considered that substantial planning weight should be attached to this harm, as well as the harm to the character and appearance of the area by reason of a three-storey apartment block. Harm has also been identified by officers owing to the loss of the, all the existing trees along the northern boundary of the site, which will alter the existing leafy character on, of Darwin Road. However, as the applicant is proposing replacement planting, officers considered that this harm should only carry some weight. Inappropriate developments in the green belt should not be approved, except in very special circumstances. And these circumstances will not exist unless the harm to the green belt and any other identified by outweighed by other considerations. The applicants have submitted what they consider to be very special circumstances in relation to the proposed development, and these are reported in full on pages 50 and 51 of the report. They include that the apartment building is essential as enabling development to reduce the loss the applicants will make in delivering the commuter care park and football pitches. And this has been justified by the submission of a viability report and accompanying cost plan, which clearly illustrates that the development would be inviolable by some £2.5 million, even with the sale of the apartments. The commuter care park for the station is much needed and would ease current on-street parking pressures in the area and improve the amenity of, of neighbouring residents on the residential streets surrounding the station. There are no other sites available in the local area for such a car park, and the site is only a short walk away from the railway station. The development would deliver the long-awaited football pitches for Bromley Cross Football Club, and this has community benefits attached. The delivery of the pitches would also involve the costly remodelling of the unauthorised material imported on the southern fields, which also has a visual benefit. Also, the provision of the um, retirement apartments would contribute towards the council's housing land supply and towards older people's housing in the borough. The development would redevelop a derelict brownfield site, which has suffered from anti-social events and which also impacts negatively on the surrounding area. 40 new jobs will be created and the development would result in a biodiversity net gain of the site of around 10%. Officers consider that the benefits associated with the development are indeed very special circumstances and clearly outweigh the harm to the green belt. Members are therefore recommended to delegate the decision to the director to secure the signing of the accompanying section 106. A summary of what would be included in the section 106 is reported within the schedule of supplementary information. This includes requirements for the commuter car park and for the football pitch plateau to be constructed prior to first use of the food store, which would secure their timely delivery. And also for the future management schemes for both the commuter car park and football pitches. The recommended delegation to the director will also allow for the decision to be referred to the Secretary of State as the development exceeds the thresholds of developments within the green belt as prescribed within the consultation direction. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, can I invite uh, therefore Ward Councillor, Councillor Greenhalgh, please. 
Councillor Greenall, should you know, you have five minutes to address the uh, committee. Thank you, Chair. Um, and uh, well, thank you for allowing me this time to uh, to speak to uh, committee. Um, this is um, a controversial application. Um, it's a site, a controversial site that will be known to many on planning. Um, and this is all about balance. And um, it is, it, I understand, I totally get that it's incredibly difficult a decision outweighing the green belt to the community benefits. And uh, myself and my colleagues have, uh, have pondered long and hard over this one. And there is mixed opinion in the community, but I think on the whole, after the consultation, the vast majority of residents uh, see that the community benefits, as the report uh, uh, states uh, does outweigh uh, the harm that, that inevitably does happen to some of the green space. I just want to make the point, a great amount of this site is brownfield. In 2007, the decision was made uh, by, by the planning committee to allow the nursery to become a garden centre, which was then unpermissible on green belt. That was granted by this planning committee. Um, uh, a Bolton Council and it therefore then from that time on became development on the green belt and therefore the the store um, uh, the proposed store is on the existing brownfield site uh, the proposed little store and indeed uh, a percentage of the of the car park uh, allocations uh, the community benefits uh, are, are very clear uh, we have a community car park 91 spaces which has been a problem for our area for many, many years. The on number amount of on street commuter parking that has blighted the lives of residents uh, in neighbouring housing estates, Grange Park Road Estate, Turton Heights, Shady Lane, Higher Shady Lane, Montrose Drive, Hillside Avenue Estate, just to name some of the streets that are blighted by commuter car, including the on street car parking, which is now starting along Turton Road during peak times. That would all come to an end if this development happened, we would have TROs on those which prohibited uh, those those parking and, and made use of the 91 space car park. Uh, the football pitches is an enormous community asset, of course, as, as members will know, this is permissible within Greenbelt anyway, and already has historically uh, planning permission. But this, the site, as you've seen by the pictures, is derelict at the moment. Uh, it is not uh, a beauty spot by any means. Uh, the biodiversity is going to be protected to the rear uh, with the creation of ponds um, uh, by, by, uh, by the developer uh, and, and replanting. And of course, but I do need to point out there is loss of trees, which, which is of course regrettable. And as I said, this is, this is a balance. But this will provide welcome a uh, community asset in terms of the football pitches and maintained by a local football team. So we have sustainability there. We also have sustainability from the car park. And I just want to stress at the end that this, this proposal can only go forward with the full uh, knowledge that this can only happen with the 106 agreement of that these facilities have to be um, uh, produced in phase one with the build of the store. The store cannot be built and allowed to open until these community facilities are uh, developed. I think that's a very important part of the 106. The fact that there is no current formal agreement uh, is, is, is not something that can go against it because the 106 agreement has to have that formal agreement uh, for the director to, to acknowledge it and approve it for it to then uh, the whole uh, the whole development to go ahead. So on the whole, I do genuinely believe uh, the apartments as well, they are the only part of this that makes this viable for the whole scheme to go ahead. Personally, I would love it without the apartments, but that is the only part of the scheme that makes the whole scheme viable. And I have to say, Bronner Cross is one of those areas. It has a higher percentage of uh, elderly uh, residents, as we've seen with the recent, particularly over 80s. They are, many of them are single people in their houses with very limited options to downsize within their areas. And this, the, 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 um, the additional, um, uh, uh, availability of uh, retirement apartments in the area is something which is vastly needed. So it, it is also 
uh, addressing a need that we have locally as well so that people have an ability in the area to downsize and free up much needed housing in the area. So while this is not a perfect application, it is one that on balance the community, I think uh, it, uh, in majority, certainly from the consultation, uh, accepts uh, the, the outweighs the community benefits and therefore um, uh, myself uh, and I can speak for my colleague, Councillor Muslim. I think Councillor Connor will speak in her own right on committee. One, one uh, are, happy to support the, are happy to support the proposals put forward by the officers, recommend approval and therefore refer to the Secretary of State. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Greenhalgh. Can I now call Liz Spencer as an objector? Hello. You have uh, three minutes to address the committee. And I'll ask then you to stay online so that uh, you can take any questions from members, please. OK, you thank you very much. Minutes. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you for having me on to this meeting. I'm raising some objections to this proposal on a number of grounds. Firstly, this proposal is now outdated in view of the COVID issues. A commute to car park is probably no longer required because people do not commute. The provision of a new shop that replicates a shop two miles down the road is not an exceptional need. And the issue of football pitch is not exceptional either, insofar as we are not short of grass and hard surface team sport facilities. There's pitches at all our local schools, which still luckily have their playing fields. The fact these may be underutilised and or are poorly managed is really no excuse for the creation of more. So, as the report says, there will be increased traffic, more car parks mean more cars, more shops mean more people driving around searching for the perfect tin of tomatoes or whatever leads them from one shop to another. So, the main issue here is about a green belt and a covenant. This covenant is there to create an open space for the local people. It's not there to create an income stream for a football club. And we get to then the diversity issues. We are now, everyone knows we are in the most nature diverse, nature depleted areas of Europe, let alone anywhere else. But this proposal will actually add to that depletion. Tearing down 200 year old trees and replacing them with six, seven, eight year old saplings is going to take a very, very long time before the proposed or the muted net biodiversity gain will ever take place. I'm fairly sure none of us here will be living to see that happening. Playing fields themselves as grass areas are also the most nature depleted surface you can have, with the exception maybe of AstroTurf. There is, compared to scrubland, there's a microscopic percentage. Compared to well-managed open spaces, playing fields have virtually no biodiversity. And to top that off, we're going to have two acts of eco-vandalism by digging up a load of topsoil from one place and removing it to put on another place to create the pitch plateau. So the council report itself raises problems about this, but my real issues now are that, you know, the creation of the assisted living stroke retirement apartments, which Council Greenhouse says is key to this proposal, is really currently unlikely to happen. The proposal at Edgerton House is not happening and so on and so forth. Nobody is investing in anything to do with care sectors, Ms. social Spencer, provision. You, you have uh, one sentence please to complete. You've had your time. One second. Okay, this is, this is now a wasted opportunity. We could be making a forward-looking community space with Thank allotments you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions uh, to Miss Spencer from members, please? Uh, thank you very much indeed. Could I thank invite you. therefore uh, uh, Jonathan Harper uh, to speak on behalf of the uh, applicants, please? Mr. Harper, you likewise have got three minutes to address the meeting and then to take any questions that members may have. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. My name is Jonathan Harper of Rapley's Commercial Property and Planning Consultants, representing the applicants Little, 
I'm pleased that following close consultation with council officers, the application has been recommended for your approval this afternoon. The development's proposal will deliver a significant number of clear tangible benefits. It will facilitate the redevelopment of a derelict underutilised brownfield site, which continues to suffer antisocial behaviour issues and impacts negatively on the area. It will provide a new discount food store, which will improve local shopping choice, allowing more residents to shop locally and sustainably. There will be a positive economic impact as a result of new jobs, which carry particular importance at this present time. A new commuter car park to serve Bromley Cross train station will be created, which will assist in promoting sustainable travel patterns and easing current parking issues in the area. New playing pitches for Bromley Cross Football Club will be delivered, which will allow them to expand their offering for the benefit of the local community. New purpose-built retirement living accommodation will provide new homes, which will assist the council in meeting its housing delivery targets. And the scheme will provide comprehensive new landscaping that will deliver significant wildlife and ecological enhancements and biodiversity net gain. As confirmed within the committee report, the application is recommended for approval on the following basis. In regard to retail planning considerations, council officers have concluded that the scheme will not give rise to any adverse impacts on designated retail centres. In respect to highways, highways officers are fully satisfied that the proposal is acceptable in highways terms and provides appropriate access, parking and delivery provision. The new roundabout and site access will ensure traffic flow is not disrupted and a new pedestrian crossing will be provided. In regard to design, Little have worked hard with the council to bring forward a proposal which will contribute positively to the surrounding area and which will enhance the site. In addition, the proposal will have no adverse impacts on surrounding amenity, will not increase the risk of flooding and will safeguard and enhance biodiversity. Whilst officers have set out within their report that the development would be considered inappropriate development within the green belt, they have concluded that very special circumstances exist which clearly outweigh any recognised harm. It can therefore be supported in these terms. On this basis, the development is in accordance with national planning guidance. Therefore, on the basis of both the scheme's clear tangible benefits and the recommendation within the committee report, we kindly request that members determine the application in accordance with the officer recommendation for approval. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr Harper. Mr Harper, I've got the uh, indication of a question initially from Councillor Howarth, please. Councillor Howarth. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, Mr Harper, um, I know that our specialist officers have, have had a look at your sequential site uh, assessment and I know that's not in the bundle, but it is the document or rather that is part of the one of the documents that uh, your company Rapleys have, uh, have um, submitted to the council. So I've had a look at it. I can't remember how many pages that document is, but on page 29, your sequential site assessment uh, uh, comes in there and there's a couple of um, there's a couple of comments. I think it's paras 6, 10 and 6, 11. Yeah, it's section six. I just want to get a bit more of a sense of uh, what what you, what your view is on that, because in one paragraph, it tells me that there are no your assessment is there's no more superior sites. So you're highlighting that uh, this is the best site uh, uh, you found or little little um, professional staff have found that this is the best site. Uh, but then the next paragraph uh, doesn't really speak to the point of superior. It just just tries to tell me that based on the criteria that Little use for the work that they do on these deep discount food stores, they've not been able to to find another site. Is there anything you yourself? Is this something that you know a fair bit about this sequential site assessment um, that you can say today to just make it somewhat a bit clearer for me? I'd be grateful. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. So the um, sequential test forms part of national planning policy and in, in effect the process that, that's gone through is the applicant must firstly, well this particular application is located in a, an out of centre location so we're required to look at the store's catchment, look at what centres are located within that catchment and then make an assessment as to whether there are any alternative sites which could potentially accommodate the development proposed which may therefore be considered sequentially preferable so in this particular case we've obviously looked at 
centres located within our catchments. There haven't been any other alternative sites and therefore in policy terms, it's deemed to, to pass that sequential test as set out within national policy. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Councillor Howarth. Right, I have two speakers wishing to speak. In accordance with precedent, I'm going to invite uh, Councillor Comer as Ward Councillor, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, in an ideal world, we would all like this not to be um, happening on Greenbelt site. Um, sadly, due to the area now being abandoned, subjects of fire, setting up of traveller camps, antisocial behaviour, landfill and fly tipping is now a derelict, troublesome area. It's now a brownfield site, as it has previously had a garden centre on it, which broke the green belt, having a nursery and garden centre there in 2007. Little on this site with the football pitches and car park, which is desperately needed for the area. The car park will bring an end to years of problems that commuters on street parking. This has been a blight to the uh, lives of residents on nearby housing estates. The apartment block is necessary to make the scheme viable. No apartments and cannot fund football pitches and the area would remain derelict. The biodiversity at the rear is protected and ponds would be reloc relocated. There is some loss of trees, which is regrettable, but this application is all about the balance of benefits. The football pitches are massively needed and I just want to point out um, to cor correct Liz Spencer, from the Cross Football Club is a charity and it is not a, a money making scheme, it is a charity and the football pitches are massively needed. Yes, there are schools and other pitches that the club travel the whole of the borough to try and complete matches, but um, everything's cancelled because of water logging, so these pitches would end that problem. Um, we are cu currently travelling all over Bolton, but the pitches would be available for the rest of the community to use as and when required. All this in mind, after the consultation, we find the majority of residents do support it, and I believe the community benefit outweighs the negative effects on the green space. I therefore support the officer recommendation as set out within the conclusion on page 52, which is should members minded to approve the application that the decision be delegated to the director to secure the signing of the accompanying section 106 agreement and also to enable the decision to be referred to the secretary of state prior to the issuing of any approval. I therefore move for recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Connor. Uh, Councillor Hayes. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, normally, I would very strongly oppose any developments on the green belt. I think in some cases we may very, we've actually bent the rules rather too easily. But I'm very conscious that this is a balance. I take very seriously the community benefits that will be seen, particularly the problems of parking in relation to the station. And additionally, we're removing a site which is a a blot on the landscape actually. The, pre the previous garden centre is very unsightly and I think we do well to remove that and do something on that. Uh, and I think also we take account of ward councillors. I think in this sort of situation, ward councillors know their area better than anybody else. And I would be very happy on that basis to second the, the uh, approval. What I add one thing that the um, objector said about the uh, store, etc., being out of, uh, out of time because of the effects of COVID. Well, we all hope that eventually things will re return to relative normality following the COVID outbreak. And I think we've got to make decisions based on that assumption. So, uh, Chair, as I say, I'm very happy to second the proposal. Well, thank you, Councillor Hayes. Councillor Peel. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I too have, have, have thought long and hard about this uh, this application, and and I think it, it is a very difficult one uh, with uh, with pros and cons. But um, I, um, I I take exception to something Councillor Hayes just said when he, he said uh, this committee often 
that often bends Greenbelt rules. So I think that's largely mythology that's that's grown up over the years. Um, there are very, very few examples uh, where that has happened. And on each occasion, there have been uh, exceptional or special circumstances uh, that have led to that happening. Uh, certainly, my experience is, is the committee is quite um, uh, quite firm on, on protecting the green belt and always has been. Um, so that that is our starting point. The, the other the other thing I wanted wanted to say was the fact that um, land that is designated as green belt is is not looked after. It is is unkempt. It, uh, uh, people fly to upon etc. Is not a reason to develop green belt. Um, so when you come to an application like this, <clears throat> that ultimately has to be referred to the Secretary of State when it uh, the recommendation of officers goes against our local policy, then there has to be exceptional uh, or special circumstances, and that is the that, that is the um, the toss up between uh, the pros and the cons. Now, I I came to a different conclusion uh, from the. Um, from the, uh, the the officers and that, in that I felt that actually the provision of a much needed uh, community car park uh, could well meet special circumstances, as that would clearly be a community asset. Uh, it would clearly be of benefit to the local community of Bromley Cross and 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 from wider afield, uh, because um, I disagree with with the objector in that. Um, park and ride um, is one of the few um, examples that can be given that really does demonstrate um, a piecemeal shift of people from car to train to public transport. It really does work and we really do need far more park and ride facilities at all of our train stations uh, across, uh, across our borough to make that transition. So it's the one element of this um, application that I usually support and um, unfortunately I am going to disagree with the World Council on this occasion because I cannot support the remainder of it uh, and I'll explain why. If this was just an application for the commuter car park um, I would probably be minded um, to go for it. Um, we've heard from both Councillor Green Ash and Councillor Connor that the apartment building is necessary because that's the enabling development to allow for the um, uh, the construction of the football facilities. But there's no mention made of the much bigger uh, viable project, which is the key to this, uh, which is what the applicant wants, which is the erection of a huge um, supermarket uh, with a huge car park. That in itself could be argued uh, would be the, the the aspects of the of the enabling development uh, that in itself would make the scheme the whole scheme financially viable <coughs> without the apartments or vice versa because if the argument is coming in that the apartments are needed to make the football pitches viable i.e an enabling development then what is the need for the supermarket and they understand the arguments uh, that have been made that the supermarket is on previously uh, developed land within the Greenbelt. It's not brownfield land, it's previously developed land within the Greenbelt. Um, if we're going to go back 13 years to 2007 when this committee um, gave permission for the existing nursery to be um, turned into a, a, a garden centre, then I'm not sure how many of us have got good memories, perhaps myself and the chair might have actually been on that committee at the time, but I do, the chair is nodding, yeah, but I do actually remember uh, myself, um, the, the, the exceptional circumstances we looked at then was that the garden centre has some affiliation uh, with um, the, the, the same, similar kind of use as to what the nursery was doing, and so it was quite a similar thing, and there was some Kind, it could have been argued with some kind of compatibility uh, with with Greenbelt policy to actually have uh, garden centre facilities. So it was a, a difficult decision 13 years ago, but I don't think anybody on the committee at that point um, would have envisaged that that would open the floodgates to any kind of structure, be it a, um, 
a huge um, shed supermarket or, or, or a housing complex. So I'm not um, I'm not convinced uh, that the special circumstances have actually been fully addressed in this application. There are certain elements to conclude. Obviously, the football pitches, yes, I would support that. I would always support sports facilities within the green belt and, and associated infrastructure. Um, I personally would go for a community facility like the car park in the green belt because I think that is a special circumstance. There may even be an argument for specialist housing, although I don't think this is particular specialist. I think it's just aimed at a, an older audience, but there certainly is no argument for um, a, a large supermarket and car park as a special circumstance in the green belt. And the fact that that isn't even being argued for in terms of the enabling aspects of the development to me exposes um, what actually uh, what, what, what actually is the main issue of this application. And it's barely been mentioned by the applicants or the, or the councils, the monolithic supermarket. For all those reasons, and, and I do accept it's a difficult one and it's a balanced decision, but I can't uh, support this application. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor Howarth. Please. Sorry, Councillor Newall first. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I can't look straight. Councillor Darvesh, next, please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to start off with uh, just some comments, basically, in some of the uh, the the report, uh, paragraphs 49 up to 54, um, which basically talks about a previously developed site in the in the green belt. The fact that you can use this site and or develop this site and be acceptable as long as this there's no other greater impact on the green belt compared to what was actually existing there previously. And I think we all understand that. But paragraph 53 is a bit worrying because I'm not taking this out of context, but according to the paragraph, what it actually says is that a garden center has limited A1 retail use and therefore could actually be turned into a supermarket, a full A1 retail use. Now, my understanding is that the garden centre and why you tend to find them in the Great Belt is simply because they have a limited retail use element to it, which is ancillary to the main purpose of the garden centre. It's a bit like uh, having an A3 restaurant use and Holland's Nurseries actually had a little cafe in there. That becomes ancillary to the main purpose, which is the garden centre. So. I think paragraph 53 almost indicates that anybody in the in the green belt, a garden centre, which also has limited A1 retail use, would end up turning into a, a supermarket. So if you're driving down Wigan Road and you see that uh, garden centre on your left in a really nice location, somehow you think if that business went into liquidation, it will turn into a supermarket. I think it's not the case at all. I mean, that is why garden centres are protected from being turned automatically into supermarkets because they don't have the full functioning A1 retail use. And I think that's really, really important because I think that paragraph uh, is a bit misleading. Uh, the other aspects of the application is the sequential test. Now, it also implies that if the food store cannot on all the local shopping districts, cannot find a nearby piece of land, uh, that it's okay to build on a previously developed site in the green belt. I, I don't think that is actually the case. I think what they are supposed to do is look at alternative sites in the local shopping districts, but not the, on the green belt. Otherwise, they would always find uh, a suitable site on the green belt. Um, the traffic assessment, I'm not totally convinced with. I mean, 50% all the new traffic, 50% of the traffic generated in the area will be new. Um, I can tell you now that Hollywood Station is always full. Uh, many cars actually park on Crompton Way. There are going to be some TROs coming onto Crompton Way, so all them, play, all them cars will need to find additional places. They'll all end up going to Bromley Cross, um, this car park, simply because it could be a free car park for community use. So I think a lot of cars will be shuffled to find their way towards this uh, new car park. So. From an enabling applicant uh, application point of view, I, I think we have seen better enabling applications. I can't see no real substantial economic gain with this one or no real substantial community benefit. The re and, and I think we need to be realistic. 
the football club got planning permission for football pitches in 2007. I know they registered charity, but I think if the will was there, they would have found the money because they actually already got planning permission for the football pitches. So it's not like there's some sort of gain here besides somebody else paying for these football pitches. Um, I think TFGM, I think it's their responsibility to come up with some money and build a car park, which Council Peel alluded to, which is I think most members which actually support that simply because it is a, a massive community benefit. So in, in to summarise, I, I think the benefits of this application have been grossly underestimated and so do not outweigh the harm on the green belt and therefore I will second refusal on this application. Well, thank you, Professor Dadesh. Before we go further, can I remind members that the contents of the chat box is a public document and uh, is, uh, forms part of the record. Uh, can I therefore now invite uh, Councillor Newall, please, to uh, address the meeting? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, this application um, reminds me very much of the, the application a few years ago for Hilton Park in, in, in as much as the developer is saying, if you give me what I want, we will give you this. Um, you know, in Hilton Park, it was the golf club and the houses. And we now have a situation where these um, community benefits, which I accept would be of great benefit to the community there, in 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 respect that if you if we can have the store and the flats, you can have your football fields and you can have your car park. And I really do think it's the start of a slippery slope if we start to mitigate um, approving applications on the green belt in 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 this respect because. You can talk yourself into, well, um, giving approval because of the benefit to your community. And we are supposed to be guardians of the green belt. And that is not guardianship when you're mitigating the circumstances in which you will let it be built on. It is not a brownfield site. It is greenfield that's been previously used. If it was a brownfield site, we wouldn't be having this debate today. Uh, and the other thing, that I don't think should be a consideration is when people are saying, well, the local community accept that it's OK on this occasion to build on the, the, the green belt. It isn't. As I say, we, we have stewardship, we have guardianship of the green belt and the the the. Discussions on this committee when um, I felt that things have been inappropriate and they have been thought to be inappropriate and vice versa. But the criteria is very strict and, and I've got to support refusal on this because although I don't like to see any kind of land unkempt and in a state of disrepair, that isn't an excuse to build a supermarket on it or to build a block of flats. So um, I don't think this in any way, the, uh, the benefits of this application in any way uh, mitigate the reasons why we don't build on Greenbelt. So I'm happy to support refusal of this chair. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Councillor Howarth. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to uh, <clears throat> raise um, just some different issues uh, pertaining to some of the matters that are being discussed. Um, now, the late list uh, mentioned firming up uh, of, of conditions. It mentioned a couple of conditions, but I'm interested in uh, in a couple of other things in the document uh, that speaks to conditions and not clear. And forgive me, I, I, sh I should have just clicked on the, the actual conditions that come later in the document in front of me. But I'll go with what the um, I'll go with what the words of the document uh, uh, tell us so I'm I'm speaking to around page 47 and that and that talks first of all about the bank top uh, site of, of biological importance and there it says there's a suggestion is there not um, it must be appropriately conditioned and monitored now that's about building if I remember that's about when the, when it comes to building the plateau and I just thought if it's talking there about must be appropriately conditioned then then yes, of course, it, it needs to be. And I, I think that's why it um, it doesn't make it clear in the uh, in the whole of the document whether that has been 
put put down there as a condition. I'll probably have to go and click on the conditions uh, just as I get to the end of uh, speaking about this. The, the other thing I wanted to uh, talk about though is paragraph 125 where condition comes up again actually, um, where um, it talks about the applicant actually has said that they're willing to apply uh, for a license to Natural England uh, as, re as regards the um, when they put together the three ponds or whoever does the, the building and the works for them. Um, again, um, then uh, it, that needs to be clear as regards what that uh, could be as a condition, uh, those that are interested in supporting the application, uh, whether the condition will just want to talk about whether it has to be a license or whether there would just be a statement from uh, from Natural England. And my presumption is actually that for those that want to support this, uh, it's likely something that the director and the chair, uh, the action could be that they would sort that out. Sorry, it's that situation where I'm just holding myself back a bit because I don't have I don't have uh, paper documents. So I'm doing my best chair to scroll down to the actual conditions. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, that they're not there. Uh, if they're there, it's going to be odd, actually, because then I'll then the point I make with the officer is, well, if they're there, why, why does the whole of the document that I've read suggest that they're not? Um, OK, I'll come back. I'll come back or perhaps at the end of it, we, we might need to come back. But that, I just wanted to um, give a contribution on the firming up of conditions, please, for those that want to uh, support this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Havis. I've got Councillor Dean, and then from the frantic way, then I take it Councillor Sherrington would like to speak. Well, Councillor Dean, first, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, I've listened to the debate. I think it's, um, as the local ward councillors have said, it's not a um, simple, straightforward um, application. There are some sort of, um, you know, uh, things that seriously need to be looked at. I think when it comes to the green belt, I think as has been mentioned, that horse was shot in 2007 when uh, we gave permission uh, to um, to to build or to have a change of use on, on this on this land. Um, I think what swings it for me is two things: is the uh, the amount of community consultation that's gone into this, um, and um, what the community is actually going to gain from this. And there, I know there has been a lot of consultation. There has been a lot of interaction between uh, the local councillors there and um, and the community. So those discussions have taken place. We're all aware of the issues with the train station. Uh, but one of the things I would like to point out is uh, something that Councillor Peel said uh, about the apartments uh, being the viability for the football pitches. The apartments are not a viability for the football pitches. They're a part. They're a viability for the whole project um, and everything that's involved in that. Uh, the football club doesn't own the land, so they can't develop anything on it themselves. Um, and it, it is such a shame that it, you know, the way the land is, uh, it's, it's derelict. It's an eyesore. It's a hub for antisocial behaviour. Something does need to be done. And I think the benefits that come with uh, the application are, are worth supporting. So I'll be supporting the project. Thank you, Councillor Dean. Councillor Sherrington. Uh, thank you, Chair. Sorry about that. I've had to, I've been putting myself through to speak and it keeps saying that I've got to retry and all the rest of it, then it's not accepted. So this might happen all the way through this uh, through this committee, unfortunately. Um, I'd like to first of all start off by saying I must be one of those dinosaurs who actually stood on the land at Burtonshaw that had a covenant to not build on those houses and then it was overturned by the Secretary of State. So I have to ask, will, will we finish up now with the Secretary of State actually overturning anything that we come up with anyway? But I do feel that, uh, you know, there's certain things it's like, for instance, oh, let's have a garden centre and then let's not have it successful and then it can go into a rubbish heap and there you can get anything you want and put any kind of building you like on there afterwards because quite simply, 
you know, let's upset the residents and then take away their green belt. Well, I'm sorry, I do feel that they've had enough green belt taken away from them. And I do think that uh, the covenant still stands on this area. And I do think that uh, as far as the garden centre is concerned, all that could just be cleared away and it could just go back to being green belt. And the, as far as the uh, car parking is concerned, Yes, I do realise that there isn't enough car parking that goes on in Bromley Cross. I do know that because of the fact of how the roads are clogged up going down to the other car park down at Harleth Wood so that people can go on the trains. I do understand that, but I do, and so to a certain extent, I've no problem with the car parking. I've no problem with the uh, football pitches because it's green belt and uh, football pitches are all right to go there. To a certain extent, I really don't have a lot of problems with Littles because it's actually going on the site of the so-called garden centre that was there by Hollands. And, and, but I do think that if putting up uh, these apartments is a step too far because it is yet again some more housing going on that land that was supposed to have been green belt and there's so little of that left now and i do feel that this is a step too far and as a dinosaur unfortunately i do have history and i do remember things and uh, so therefore i would like to uh, support refusal thank you thank you professor sherrington uh, councillor morgan Thanks, Chair. Like, Council like Councillor Sherrington, I'm having the same issues. It's not allowing me to type anything into chat. It's saying it's failed to send and keep retrying. So I think you need to keep looking at your screen so we can wave at you as well, I think. Um, I've listened intently on the debate and I'm really surprised how it's gone, actually, because um, I was on the original application in 2007 when we did the, uh, the garden centre. I can remember the public outcry then, which was massive compared to what we're listening to now. In fact, the World Council suggests that um, the, the, the community consultation is the majority are in support of that, which certainly wasn't the case when um, we heard the application to turn it into a garden centre. And I do listen really with dismay when some, some, some of my colleagues, some of the council colleagues say that just because somebody listens, uh, says something, the public says something, it doesn't mean we have to listen to them. Well, that suits when it can, when it, when it suits them to say that, because for instance, when I represented Halton and we spent years on the uh, uh, Cutake project and the community were up in arms and against it, it was okay then to decide and support that application against the wishes of the community. So this absolutely is the, the enabling element of this whole project is the um, apartments which facilitate the community football pitches, which can uh, facilitate the community car park, which obviously enables uh, more commuting from the Bromley Cross area. And then I ask members to look at the demographics of Bromley Cross. We've got one of our eldest, eldest demographics in the borough um, and these apartments fit that demographic and the supermarket, a discount supermarket also fits that demographic. So I have, I have to say, and one of the major points I think was brought up as well is this makes a contribution to our housing allocation and we have to keep building these houses and appropriate housing in the appropriate places. So as, as the leader of the council said, this is an unbalanced decision, but it certainly is it's making the, the best of a, a bad issue at the moment with regards to the state of the surrounding area. And the bottom line is the community are about it. The officers have said that the uh, community benefits outweigh the negatives and have recommended approval and therefore I will be supporting this application um, for the benefit of the people that live in the area. Thank you Chair. Thank you Councillor Morgan. Uh, those are all the speakers uh, but before we come to the vote um, we've had a couple of history lessons this afternoon and I want to uh, add uh, a further detail to that uh, application because Councillor Sherry referred to standing on the land. Well in fact she wasn't alone in that, others did that uh, but sadly, because of the decision of this planning committee made in committee room A in 1986, uh, that uh, campaign, that battle was lost because the courts ruled that the council 
had prejudged uh, the uh, covenant and therefore the covenant was no longer extant. Uh, and that in itself was the start of the process. The second thing I would say is that Council Darvesh is correct. Uh, when uh, the uh, issue of uh, a garden centre selling uh, a variety of projects, products, it was actually said that uh, when we grant permission for the garden centre, it could ultimately lead to a wider development of the site. And that is what we are now faced with. And I think in terms of the car park uh, issues that have been raised about that, it must be said that uh, ironically, it is the supermarket which is largely on the uh, brownfield land. The car park would in fact be going on to what is currently uh, open land and, and undeveloped land. So we would keep these in, in perspective. And uh, therefore we're dealing with uh, a composite application uh, which has got conditions and the conditions are spelled out both in the report and in the supplementary uh, paper that came to members. Ultimately, those will have to be, as the leader of the council said in his uh, statement at the beginning of this debate, they will have to be finalised and agreed before development can proceed and before the matter is referred to uh, Secretary of State uh, for final determination. So on that basis, we've had the argument, we've had the debate, it has been proposed and seconded that uh, we should uh, approve and therefore we will uh, move to the vote. Mrs. Berry, yes, can we yes. yes, Chair, we'll move to the vote. Uh, simple vote yes. for, against or abstain. This is in uh, favour of approval of the development. Councillor Ayub. <coughs> Sorry. Sure. <laughs> Councillor Ayub. <laughs> Come on. Sorry. Did he did he respond, Councillor Ayub? Hello. Well, I move on, Councillor Connor. Come back to me. For Councillor Darvish. Against. There is, I'm going to help you out of this is because we made the last decision. Mm -hmm. Councillor Dean. And if they use the or, Yeah. I won't in there. Councillor Howarth. Uh, four. Councillor Hayes. Four. Councillor Hornby. Four. Councillor Mystery. Against. Councillor Morgan. Four. Councillor Peel. Against. Councillor Radcliffe. Four. Councillor Sanders. Four. Councillor Sherrington. Against. Councillor Walsh. Four. Councillor New uh, Sorry, Councillor Wright. Four. Councillor Newall. Against. Can I go back to Councillor Ayu, please? Yeah, against. Against. Thank you. The application. The application's is approved. approved, Chair. Yeah. That is approved. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We move then to uh, page four in the bundle. Land at the rear of Rocker Restaurant. Chair, uh, can I just advise that the speaker to, to come in on this one? Uh, have we not? Uh, we've not. No, he's decided he would rather not speak, Chair. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. So I don't know whether you want to go back to the start or do you want to carry on with that one anyway? We'll go on with uh, this one. It's page four in the bundle, so we'll take it next. We're back in the bundle then. Mr. Williams, again, I think you're presenting this one, is that right? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. This application is a resubmission of an application that was refused under delegated powers in 2019 for access, design, loss of trees and insufficient information reasons. One few apartments is now applied for and the proposed apartments are now to be accommodated within one L-shaped two and a half storey building rather than two three storey buildings. The application cites the former bowling greens of the former Royal Oak pub. 
The green has not been in use for over 10 years and, and is very overgrown. There is already an extant permission for residential development on, this, on the site, not as extant until the 1st of May. Access to the development was previously proposed within the 2019 application via Back Bradshaw Brow East, which is the cobbled unadopted road within Longsanct Park, then through the stone wall that bounds the former bowling green. Officers found that this proposed access was unacceptable owing to the substantial dimensions of the road and the um, so the substandard dimensions of the road and the encroachments of it into the neighbouring local nature reserve. Access is now proposed via the adjacent car park, um, restaurant car park from the existing signal controlled access into um, Bradshaw Brow. This access arrangement was previously approved within the extant permission for the site and would result in the number of car parking spaces for the neighbouring restaurant being reduced from 17 to, to 10. Since the publication of the officer's report, highways engineers have raised concerns about the reduction in the number of spaces for the restaurant, coupled with the number of spaces proposed for the apartments, and that's 22 for the um, 17 apartments. Officers would however advise that the redu reduction in restaurant parking has previously been approved and that the site is considered to be in a reasonably sustainable location. Transport for Greater Manchester have recommended that the applicants contributes £3,500 plus VAT towards the modification of the staging of the traffic lights at the junction of the access with Bradshaw Brown and Turton Road. The applicant has agreed to this and this would be secured within the, um, the suggested Section 106 agreement. The proposed buildings to be located along the south and west boundaries of the sites as opposed to the south and east boundaries as previously refused and this proposed sighting leads to the loss of fewer trees. External appearance of the apartments has been amended since the refusal, as has the scale. Sufficient information has now also been submitted with regards to drainage and how bats would be safeguarded. So it's therefore considered that the previous reasons for refusal have now been fully addressed. The applicants have submitted a viability appraisal, which demonstrates that the development would not be viable if the full section 106 contributions mm -hmm. as set out on page 14 were sought. The appraisal has been individually reviewed and the local planning authority has been advised that the applicants would be able to contribute £150,000 while st still achieving a reasonable profit. The applicants has therefore agreed to contribute this £150,000 along with the required contributions towards traffic lights. A suggested uh, division of the contribution is reported at paragraph 75. Members have therefore recommended to de delegate the decision to the director to secure the provision of the section 106 agreement. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much for that. Can I just clarify something you said, please? Just confirm that we have extant approvals for both development on the site sorry, three things, development on the site, access is no proposed, and the reduction of restaurant car parking. Those are three extant approvals, are they? Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, there's one extant approval, which is benign dwellings. Uh, so that gives the extant permission for residential developments of the site. Also the proposed access, which is exactly the same as now proposed, and also the reduction of the car parking from 17 to 10 for the restaurant. Thank you very much for that. There are no uh, speakers listed, so can I turn to ward councillors? Councillor Ratcliffe, please. You're muted, uh, Councillor Ratcliffe. We'd love to hear you. Sorry about that. The application is an improvement on the previous one in the height and scale being able to retain trees and provide room for replacement trees where we've lost some. The upper Bradshaw Valley. But I still have grave reservations about the entrance being on such a major junction. This area is... ...even further at some times. Um, however, I am prepared to listen to other members' opinions on this before I really make my final decision. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Dean, do you wish to speak on this? 
Uh, I don't uh, wish to speak at the moment. I may later on in the debate. Thank you very much indeed. The matter is therefore open to uh, debate. There are no speakers listed. Chairman, sorry, there's you right. obviously can't see the chat box. Councillor Hayes, Councillor Newell, and myself. Right, sorry, I can't see the chat box. So it's Councillor Hayes, Newall, and yourself. That in that order, please. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for assisting, Councillor Peel. Yeah. Councillor Hayes, please. And Thank you, Chair. Manish. I, I'm glad Councillor Peel's assisting with the chat box. He's, uh, he does come in quite useful sometimes. Um, well, initially, I wanted to make a comment, a, a question to officers, really, um, because I am very concerned about the reduction in car parking spaces for the the, the restaurant. Um, I'm a bit confused if it's been approved before, but surely the um, the, the core strategy appendix on parking standards does still apply and I think even at 17 it's probably under the number that's needed and uh, it's a very busy junction. I drive past it relatively frequently. There's um, a lot of waiting restrictions around there, a lot of traffic in the area. Um, uh, it's a very very difficult access so I think there are more negatives to this application to be honest than there are positives. Um, so uh, I'd like the question answered about the, the car parking standards for restaurants uh, uh, at some stage, but my view it tends to be against this application, I'm afraid. Thank you. Can we take the question from uh, Councillor Hayes, please? And I'll come back to Councillor Ratcliffe. Helen, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just waiting for the yep yeah, I'm live. Um, regarding the the parking standards, the, um, the council's parking standards are set out in um, Appendix Three of the core strategy are actually maximum standards. Therefore, um, it's the requirement that any parking provision shouldn't exceed those maximum standards. So, in terms of the um, current application, um, because the the um, parking space, the number of parking spaces doesn't exceed the actual maximum requirements that are right. Um, it's normally for the applicant to um, decide whether the amount of parking that they are proposing is sufficient for their need. Um, in this instance, the proposed reduction from 17 to 10, as previously stated, has extant permission, but that was for a development for nine dwellings um, to the rear of the site. And I believe that um, more parking was proposed for those for each of those nine dwellings than are now currently proposed so overall there probably is a further reduction of parking when you do compare it with the maximum parking standards if that makes sense so there is less parking provision overall now proposed than previously but with regards to the um, parking specifically for the restaurant that is um, the same as previously proposed, uh, previously approved. Thank you. Thank you. Can I take Mr. Manley first, please, uh, planning officer? Uh, yeah, chair. Just just to say that we're actually experiencing a proxy server problem, so the message isn't working at the moment. So that hence me waving at you earlier on. So if people are encountering problem, we just may have to. Keep looking at the screen to see you can get people's attention. Thank you for that. Uh, right, Councillor Ratley, did you want to come back on something? Because I've got two other speakers uh, indicating. You're muted, Councillor Ratcliffe. You're muted, Councillor Ratcliffe. We can't hear you. Sorry about that, Chair. Um, I had several questions I wanted to ask um, the applicant, but obviously they're not here. Clear one question for me. Uh, it's about the amenity space. Um, there being a lack of amenity space in the area and that they were leaving a gap through the stone wall that would let, allow residents to access Longsite Park. I wanted to know how wide this gap was going to be. Uh, the reason being that I'm quite afraid that if it's a very wide gap, people will start going into this uh, residence through that Bradshaw Browse. And uh, I, I don't think that would be appropriate at all. 
That's question one. Shall I ask the other one now? Or? Well, I think it's going to become a question to officers because there's no applicant. Well, that's what I said, Chair. Carry on. Helen, can you sweep them all up? If, if, Mr. if Councillor Ratcliffe asked the question, and then sweep them all up as one, please. Right. The, the only other question I have is um, about the traffic lights and it being on the major junction. I'm quite, I, I feel I need further assurance that uh, this isn't going to cause uh, gridlocks and really exacerbate the traffic at peak times. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Mr Williams, please. The traffic one you may want to defer to Mr Langley who's with us this, this afternoon. OK, thanks. Uh, regarding the access to um, the um, Longside Park, the adjacent Longside Park, uh, as, as stated, there is an existing gap in the wall and this is to be retained as part of the development and you'll be able to see that on the um, proposed site layout plans. Um, the gap, I, I can confirm from going through it, is wide enough for pedestrian access. It's not particularly wide. I think it's always been intended to be pedestrian access. It's the bowling green from the park. So it's probably about maybe two metres wide at the, at the very most. Uh, regarding the, the traffic lights, um, again, I don't know if um, my colleague Greer wants to chip in after I've finished, uh, but it is proposed that the applicant does pay for the... Um, the restaging, the modification of the staging of those traffic lights um, with the intention to um, be so there isn't as much of a conflict as there currently is from um, the cars um, exiting the um, restaurant car park and those coming opposite from Jethro Street. So it is anticipated that the restaging would um, alter that and make it less of a conflict. Mr Langley, do you want to uh, come in on that one, please? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Chair. I mean, obviously, Helen has just probably potentially covered those points I was looking to pick up, but we have consulted um, Greater Manchester Urban Traffic Control, who do with all the traffic signal junctions across Greater Manchester. They've reviewed the proposals and obviously, as I said, they find this acceptable. And obviously I've asked for the additional sum of money to actually slightly retime the signals to uh, to improve that junction further. So from the local highway authority perspective, we are happy with the proposals that's been put forward. Now they've been reviewed by UTC. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Right, if we can try and return to a semblance of order, and I apologise for uh, the problems we're having. Uh, Councillor Newall, next please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to return um, to the issue of parking, if I may. And I do think it's quite unhelpful that the uh, applicant isn't here today because there are quite a few questions, I think, that he could have, they could have helped us with. Um, with regard to the parking, we've got a situation where at the same time as re the reducing parking on the restaurant, um, the building 17 apartments, 22 places, uh, not 34. I do, to say that it's up to the applicant to decide on the number de depending on their need is a bit disingenuous because if a bottleneck is created here, if we're trying to pour a pint into a half pint glass with the amount of parking that's actually needed for the apartments and the restaurant, someone else nearby is going to pick up the tab for that because that parking, those cars are going to go somewhere if not on this car park or on the restaurant car park. So I don't think that problem's being addressed at all. Um, the other thing I'd like to take uh, up is uh, the issue of the trees. Um, it doesn't say on the application how many trees are lost in total. It just says a number of trees and then a number of other trees. Um, and what I think the, the there were a subclass of trees, but it doesn't actually give a number of trees that are being lost. But in any case, the number of trees lost is less than the number of trees being retained. Um, and again, if the applicant had been here, perhaps he could have given us more detail of the actual number of trees that are going to be lost on this site. So 
you know, just from those two points of view, I do, I do think it's unsatisfactory. And, you know, the number of flats has reduced by one. Um, when there were 18 flats, it was refused. And now we're being asked to approve 17 flats. So uh, I, I'm mindful um, not to want to approve this, Chair, at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Peel, please. Councillor Dean, I can see you. <clears throat> Thanks, Chair, and also um, Councillor uh, Mystery has um, indicated in chat as well. Um, Thank you, always happy to help, Councillor Walsh. Uh, no, the only thing I wanted to uh, just just mention was in terms of the uh, junction improvements uh, by um, restaging the dedicated lights, both for this access and Jethro Street. It, it, that is a a major improvement long overdue. I mean, if that actually happened now, without any new apartments, it would be a massive improvement for people trying to get in and out of those two accesses. Uh, so I just think that that, it, that on its own. My only problem with this application was, um, as it was previously, when I've seen it in the past, was the, the access on this horrendous junction. Um, anything other than its own staging on the traffic lights would make it dangerous and non-viable, so I'm quite satisfied uh, that there aren't uh, any highways or highway safety issues um, to um, to um, uh, make somebody go against the application. As far as car parking uh, goes, I think we are where we are with the, just to address what Councillor Newell said, we are where we are with the with the uh, national standards that are, are laid down and that's, that those standards, whether we think it's disingenuous or not, Unfortunately, it has been laid down in national planning policy and we have to adhere to that. I, I have problems with it myself sometimes, especially when developments are on buzz routes and um, people say, well, it's on a buzz route so everybody will, will catch the buzz. And we know that that just isn't true. There are some issues that I do have with the with the parking uh, standards. Uh, however, I think on balance, it, it's, uh, it is a worthy application. And as Councillor Morgan said on the last application, it does contribute in a small way to our much needed housing supply, which ultimately uh, does protect the green belt. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Councillor Peel. Councillor Mystery. I had a question earlier on that's been responded to. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you very much. Councillor Dean. Thank you, Chair. Um, I agree with a lot of uh, what's been said by Councillor Radcliffe. Uh, I think it is a shame uh, that the applicant isn't here uh, to answer some of the questions uh, that needed answering. I think that's something that Councillor Newell mentioned as well. Um, I agree it's a far better application uh, than we've had in the past for a number of reasons that have been mentioned and I'm not going to go into those again. Um, I think um, I feel confident more confident with the response that we've had from highways regarding the uh, uh, staging of the traffic lights uh, and the improvement that that's going to make and council appeals quite right in saying um, that you know it would it would be a, a generally a better uh, an improvement regardless of um, whether the development takes place or not um, and the the developer has offered uh, to pay for that difference um, in the traffic lights uh, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to I'd like some of those questions answered that people like Councillor Newell and Councillor Radcliffe and myself have in mind uh, to ask the developer so I'd, I'd propose a deferral of this um, project uh, this uh, particular application and um, I either sort of, you know, ask those questions off the developer or invite them to the next meeting to answer those questions. So I'll move, I'll move deferral, Chair. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Dean. Councillor Ratcliffe, please. I'd like to second Councillor Dean's uh, proposal to defer. I had several questions I wish to ask and they're not really ones I could ask to the officers, the ones I wanted to ask to the applicant. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. The only proposition we have before us is that of deferral. If, yes, members, yes. Are, if members are minded to uh, accept that, can I suggest that the expeditious way forward 
Sorry, Council Mister, I can see that you're desperate to come in. You're muted, oh, Council Mister. Can you hear me? Yeah. We can hear you now. Was, yes. Yeah, I was. I was going to move approval. The, re the, the, the reason why I say I was going to move for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's a very good application that our officers have put together this time around. Simply, they managed to get this 106 agreement tightened up properly. They've also got the agreement that the, the traffic signals are going to be moved in. And the third thing is we need, like my colleagues already said, Nick, that we need houses in that area. And I think the, the community is going to benefit from this this particular development simply has been in the piping for a while now. At some stage, something is going to happen to this site. And, and again, the plus thing for this particular application is it's already got a permission to build nine houses on it. So rather than delay it, I propose that we move approval. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, thank you, Councillor Mr. Councillor Sherrington, you will again wait in front. Thank, thank you, Chair. I just want to uh, second approval so that it can go through as an approval. Thank you. Thank you. We there. Councillor Darvesh. Chair, yeah, just to say um, the board councillors are asking for a deferment, so I think that's probably the best option. I was actually minded to approve this application, but I'll be supporting deferment. Thank you. Councillor Peel. <laughs> You're muted, Councillor Peel. Very quickly, just echoing what Councillor Darvish said. I think um, it, it's not going to uh, it's not going to cause major problems for a short deferral to to get the answers to some of the questions. Thank you very much indeed. If members are minded to accept uh, deferral, can I suggest that we ask for questions to be submitted in advance of the meeting, uh, perhaps uh, within the next two weeks, so that those questions can be put to the applicant and uh, hopefully satisfactory answers uh, return. If that's the case, Chair, can I change my deferral, to, uh, my uh, approval to deferral? Thank you. Thank you. That, that means, Chair, I might as well withdraw and go for <laughs> deferral. Thank you. All right, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Howarth, I don't want to withdraw this. If we're going to defer oh, it, then it's prudent me. that we do so. I was I was binging on to second the proposal of uh, uh, to support this application to support Councillor Mystery. I was seconding. Um, oh, I keep forgetting the word approval. I was seconding approval, but I can't. And if I propose approval, I might not get a seconder, but I need to be, be, be go back to being formal again and I need to propose uh, approval of this application. Thank can, you very can I much. Say, can I come in, Chair? I'm sorry. Seeing that, seeing that I have a seconder, I want to move approval. Uh, it, it is by convention that if members, ward members ask for a not to be deferred, as Council Peel says, we would do so. But we do have an amendment for approval, and therefore we will now vote for the amendment, which is to approve. Following that, if need be, we'll remove the substantive, which was for a deferral. So the first vote, uh, Mrs Bailey, is yeah. for members to vote for or against approval. Yes, Chair, can I just confirm that it was Councillor Howarth that moved approval and, and Councillor Mystery that seconded it? Indeed. Yes, OK, so, so we're going this, for the amendment. This, this, this is for approval. Yes, for this is against. an amendment for approval, Chair. Councillor Ayub. Against today. Councillor Connor. Against. Councillor Darvish. Against approval. Councillor Dean. Against. Councillor Howarth. Uh, for. Councillor Hayes. Against. Councillor Hornby. Against. Councillor Mystery. For. Councillor Morgan. Against. Councillor Peel. Against. Councillor Radcliffe. Against. Councillor Sanders. Against. Councillor Sherrington. <coughs> Against. Councillor Walsh. Against. Councillor Wright. Against. Councillor Newall. Against. The amendments fallen, Chair. Right. 
We therefore vote on the uh, motion, and that is that the matter be deferred. Yes, Chair. I'll take the vote for deferral. Councillor Ayub. For. Councillor Connor. For. Councillor Darvish. For. Councillor Dean. For. Councillor Howarth. Against. Councillor Hayes. For. Councillor Hornby. For. Councillor Mystery. Against. Councillor Morgan. For. Councillor Peel. For. Councillor Radcliffe. For. Councillor Sanders. For. Councillor Sherrington. For. Councillor Walsh. For. Councillor Wright. For. Councillor Newall. For. That's carried, Chair. Deferral is approved. That stands deferred. Members agreed that therefore we'll have to ask for written uh, submissions of questions so that we try and get substantive answers before the next uh, meeting. Yes, Thank sir. you very much indeed. We come then to the third and final application for consideration this afternoon on page 82. This is the GMPTE uh, application for Bolton Interchange, Trinity Street. Mr Mansell. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, this application was deferred at November's committee to allow members' highways concerns to be addressed. Highway engineers have sought to address these concerns via the appendix to the case officer's report, and Graham Langley is available today to answer any further highways questions that members may have. Changes have been made to the plan in response to the challenges from members. In summary, the number of car spaces has been increased to 18, from the 12 currently available at Trinity Street and the 14 previously proposed in November. The number of taxi spaces will now be approximately 13. That's one more than, than the existing situation and three more than the scheme previously proposed. Um, as the proposal delivers on a number of local and national objectives, including improving both road safety uh, and improving accessibility for cyclists, pedestrians and public transport users, and we haven't identified any material planning considerations that outweigh this, a recommendation remains one of approval. Um, I understand that uh, my highways colleague uh, Malcolm Furhurst does want to make some comments in his capacity as agent. Thank, <coughs> Thank you. you Mr Furhurst. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Happy Chair. New Year. Happy New Year to you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I just wanted to just emphasise some of the uh, uh, changes we've made to the, uh, the scheme and uh, make sure you're aware of the, um, the full um, implications of what we're looking to do. So the, the scheme provides a new drop off facility outside the uh, interchange at the location of the existing uh, bus station which is currently only used for railway placement trains and retains a taxi rank and uh, a facility there. It also uh, allows the, uh, the cycle route to run up from the uh, Newport Street, uh, um, Trinity Street Junction through to the um, new cycle hub outside the interchange on Great Moor Street. Uh, the, the, and the opportunity now arises that we can look at removing the, uh, the um, lay-by on Trinity Street, which is currently uh, used and misused is probably the more the problem there uh, and remove the, uh, the road safety issues at that location. Uh, it will allow us to uh, to remove that and uh, the, the parking will be come on to Newport Street, which is a, a much safer option from that. And I know there was some, uh, you know, uh, about the, uh, the, the extended uh, route in, but for most of the traffic, it will actually be a um, similar route or reduced route. Uh, just the western traffic will have to go around either um, up through Great Moor Street via Blackhawk Street or around Bradshaw Gate and Great Moor Street that way. But uh, the advantage is that all traffic will be able to leave the, uh, the facility and go in most directions, i.e. Uh, east, west, south and uh, back round to north, which is probably better than what it is now on, the, on Trinity Street. So um, I think that's all I really like to say, just to, uh, I think we've answered all the queries that came up beforehand, I hope. So uh, if you've got any points, um, I'll happy to answer them. Thank you. I can't see anyone, but um, I've had two points that have been made to me. Uh, Councillor Peel is waiting. I'll come to Councillor Peel in a moment. 
uh, one of the questions that was raised with me was, is there any provision within these proposals uh, while the number of places for hackney carriages has been increased, are there any proposals for private hire vehicles uh, within this, or do they take their spaces within the increased number of uh, passenger cars? Uh, because cars. it's yeah, because it's uh, it's going to become highway. We can't actually identify individual spaces for them, so they will take their places with their uh, uh, the other cars as they do now. To be honest, so. OK, thank you. Councillor Dean, I know I had a question, then Councillor Peel. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, it's very similar to your question. I mean, one of the... Um, I, I do welcome the uh, the move from Trinity Street, uh, where the cars, uh, where the pickup point is at the moment, because th that does cause a bit of a bit of a chaos, as has been mentioned. However, um, what I wanted to clarify is one of the issues that we do have with the existing pick and drop area is that um, th there's no definition between uh, private hire cars and, and normal cars picking up. And I was wondering if, don't you think it would be better if there was a designated place prof for private hire vehicles uh, as well as normal vehicles? And the, the 13... Uh, just wanted to confirm the 13 spaces for taxis uh, are just for hackneys and not for private hire. So I, I, I personally believe that there should be uh, somewhere for private hire vehicles uh, as a designated place. And and also, have we done any consultation with the taxi associations that operate locally? Thank you. Yes, as part of the uh, development of the scheme, the uh, taxi uh, associations were um, approached and uh, consulted on uh, and had no issues with it. Um, the problem is that it, because it's highway, we can't, um, th there's no legal way of identifying a separated area for um, private hire vehicles uh, and public, ordinary public private cars. Um, it's it's not one of the uh, regulations you can do, whereas a hackney carriage can be um, have a separate rank, which is why we have hackney carriage ranks around the town centre, but we don't have private hire ones. Thank you. Councillor Peel. <laughs> Unless you tell me there are other speakers, Councillor Peel. Um, uh, no other speakers that I'm aware of, Joe. Um, thanks. Uh, it, it, forgive me if it is in the report, uh, but I know it is something that I did raise after the last meeting, and that's in terms of advanced signage. Um, are we planning as a highway authority outside of the application, because it doesn't need to be part of the application, to ensure there's advanced signage? Uh, on the approaches to the existing layby at Trinity Street to direct motorists to where the new drop off is. I think that will go somewhere in terms of stopping people, whether there's a barrier or not, people are going to pull in there. And I think advanced signage will uh, will go somewhere to that. So can we just have assurances, Malcolm, that that is, that is the case? Yes, I think Councillor Peel, it's quite right that it's, a, it's very important because uh, some people don't use it regularly and they will come along there after, you know, several months or years and up to, of using the, the drop off on uh, Trinity Street and find it's not available. So we will have signs taken around via Bradshagate and up onto Great Moor Street to show you this is where the station uh, drop off is now. So uh, I think, uh, you know, that's a, that's a vital element of the, uh, the overall development of the scheme. Thank you very much. I've no further request of questions, so we must open for debate. Uh, Councillor Ayub, please. Thank you, Chairman and members, for deferring the original application on 12th of November, on which we had some concerns. We have raised our concerns with officers and they have come up with improved amended plan, which is now acceptable. I still have some concerns of issue arising from pick up and drop off private cars coming into the Newport Street, which will raise the volume traffic, volume of traffic. I accept this scheme will improve the safety issue on Trenty Street, but I think we are only shifting it from Trenty Street to Newport Street. This is now an improved scheme, an original one, increasing the taxi ranks to 13 and removing the loading and unloading bay uh, from taxi ranks 
and increasing the pickup drop-offs base to 18. And now I am happy to move it for approval. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Peel. Thank you, Chair. Um, I moved um, deferral last time. Um, and I know you, you yourself, Chair, I think you've seconded that and committed deferred it. There was a number of issues with um, with this with this application. I still think that there are issues. I do. I have to be honest. However, um, it is certainly improved from last time. And uh, any scheme that increases the number of drop off spaces uh, should be approved. Um, I, I, I take exception that the, the existing bay at Trinity Street holds 12 cars. You, you, it doesn't. It, it holds more. It holds about 14. Um, you don't even have to go down and have a look in person. You just have a look at the aerial view on, on satellite and you count the number of spaces that it holds. So it does hold about 14. So what we had from the last application with the reduction of one space for Hackney's from 11 to 10 and the same amount, 14 to 14, uh, for um, for drop off. And uh, my argument then was we're not taking the opportunity, it's a missed opportunity to improve the situation. Now that now increases to 18 drop off, which by my reckoning is an increase in four, by highways reckoning is an increase in six, and the Hackney's are up uh, by two spaces as well. So in any definition of the word, it is an improvement. So I am going to I'm going to support the application because why wouldn't you? And you have to deal with the application that's in front of you, not what the aspiration is. But the aspiration still remains the same. The opportunity here for the council to work in partnership with TFGM for a more strategic scheme for a proper drop off and pick up uh, um, arrangements at this is is something that still needs to happen. We've just had a discussion about Bromley Cross, about a small car park, a commuter car park, and how vital it is needed uh, for parking spaces. And yet when we compare to our main central station, what we've got here is woefully inadequate um, <clears throat> in terms of drop off and pick up. I appreciate there's long stay parking at the Octagon and, and uh, hopefully when the, um, the car park at the bottom of Trinity Street eventually happens, um, that will help. It, as long as that car park at the bottom of Trinity Street, the new multi-storey has some kind of provision for drop off and pick up. And I think it should have some kind of provision for that because that would be really, really helpful. My main concern does remain the same though. What is now a congested and dangerous situation on Trinity Street will be eased somewhat and it will definitely become safer. However, it will transfer the problem to Newport Street and Newport Street, as members and officers uh, who drive will know, if you leave if you leave the town hall area and you choose to head up the Newport Street uh, way to to get to the um, the south part of town, very often that junction uh, between Great Moor Street and Newport Street is clogged. You only need one or two buzzes waiting for a space to the stand in the interchange, and it all backs up. So now added to that is challenge challenging quite a number of of uh, private cars onto the same short road. So I do predict uh, that it will transfer some major congestion issues on Newport Street. And I do predict that um, highways, uh, people like you, um, our, our highways officer with us here today and his colleagues will have a bit of a headache in the future in coming up with uh, ways of addressing that. Um, I think the signage is important. I think there needs to be maximum uh, parking enforcement because it is our land so our parking enforcement officers can go there and ensure that private hires aren't sitting in drop-off spaces and the other thing that is really important is ensuring that members of the public aren't just pulling up in hackney spaces because that will not go down well at all with the hackney drivers and i just worry about the conflict there uh, as i said chair on balance it's a better scheme than before it is an improvement on the existing situation for in terms of spaces i do worry still about the future uh, but um, as a as a way of moving forward uh, uh, i'm happy to um, to move the application for approval thank you thank you very much uh, councillor sherrington
Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that I would like to second this uh, up, but I believe it's already been seconded, but there you go. Anyway, uh, what it is that um, I, I, I want it to go through, but I do think there's a lot of suck it and see within this, because I do think that the congestion is just as bad on Newport Street as it is on Trinity Street. And I do think that there is things that need to be done that uh, can overcome some of this. Like for instance, perhaps a temporary car park, probably talk to Morrison's about chopping a bit of the back car park off and using it for the railway at uh, this moment in time. Because uh, obviously this multi-story that we've been promised is taking forever and uh, you know I just have to ask uh, could we not just have something put there that you have at the um, uh, the uh, Metrolink up at, Rat at uh, Ratliff it might be something that would overcome some of this difficulty um, but I do think that we've got to allow this to go ahead and see what happens and uh, and see if it does create some kind of an improvement. But we are putting everything together. We're putting the whole of the zoo into one area, you know, and uh, so the, there is definitely going to be some conflicts there that we could have done without. But like I say, let's see what happens. So yes, I will be going for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have no other indications uh, and therefore, it has been moved and seconded approval. Members yes, are voting straightforward for or against approval. Yes, Chair, I'll take the vote now. All those voting uh, for, against or abstention uh, for approval of the application. Councillor Ayub? For. Councillor Connor? For. Councillor Darvish? For. Councillor Dean? Four. Councillor Dean, four. Councillor yeah. Hayes, four. Councillor Hornby, four. Councillor Mystery, four. Councillor Morgan, four. Councillor Peel, four. Councillor Radcliffe, four. Councillor Sanders, four. Councillor Sherrington, four. Councillor Walsh. Four. Councillor Wright. Four. Councillor Newall. Four. That's approved, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. Those are the whole of the applications. We come then to uh, item six on the agenda. Uh, planning appeal decisions, report direct for place. This is uh, again in the bundle. It is there as a matter of report for information. I can't see any members uh, wishing to uh, comment on this. For that, I apologise if uh, someone's I trying can't. desperately. I can't see anybody either, Chair. OK, thank you very much indeed. Uh, that uh, being the whole of the business, can I uh, apologise if we've had the technical difficulties this afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the weather or whatever, I'm not sure. But uh, thanks for your perseverance in uh, putting up with it. And uh, I declare the meeting closed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank See you, you tomorrow next meeting. Thank Good day. You, Chair. Thank you. Yes, bye. Bye, Jim.